from the Cryogenic Center of Canada, Winnipeg. Yes, sir. Uh, John, I had emailed uh, you a couple times in the last month. We've had, I guess, a uh, couple correspondence, and uh, I'm very glad to make both of your acquaintances uh, on the air today. Cool. And I had a couple uh, questions for you. Um, and a couple just broad statements, I guess, uh, that I was hoping you could make a couple comments on. Uh, uh, I'm just going to catch my breath here. Uh, I guess I wanted to allude uh, especially to the last caller who was talking about uh, spinning things, which is directly kind of uh, what I've been working on um, somewhat uh, like I guess you had been about 20 years back in isolation somewhat, uh, as that's easy to do in Canada when it's freezing for half the year. <laughs> um, what was interesting is uh, I guess the aspect of the Philadelphia experiment and uh, some of the spinning antennas uh, that they had, uh, such the, as the uh, Delta antenna, which is actually... Oh, yeah. Uh, you're familiar with this? Oh, yeah, I got some of that stuff. Yeah, spinning RF fields, actually. Yeah. Yeah, so what will we have to do uh, for the average layman that's looking, I think, for a little bit of background into this area is to look into the actual uh, things that Einstein talked about, which is the space matrix, and we have to kind of lean towards a non-conventional way of looking at the system. And if we recall what John had uh, just said a moment ago about the geometric uh, arrangement of the Tesla coils, which is quite crucial to harmonizing with the very fabric of nature. And uh, I guess uh, that would kind of lead you into a lot of Buckminster Fuller's work with uh, spatial, uh, well, what he called the uh, omni-int, uh, Interaccommodational, which is a mm -hmm. type of way of tapping into uh, and expressing the knowledge of uh, which Hoagland has briefly mentioned upon the tetrahedron, which is only one of the uh, platonic or dimensional uh, levels. And uh, I guess uh, I'm trying to allude to a, a unified field theory or a theory of everything uh, mm -hmm. that has been mainly quite elusive because of our Cartesian slash cubicle ways of thinking about nature and space and how this might interrelate into some of the uh, Russian pyramids that they're doing uh, in... Uh, okay, well, uh, let, let's hold it there and uh, with pyramids because I want to ask uh, John something. John, obviously, this is a source of power, mm -hmm. a very large source of power. I mean, you move something as massive as a 1,500-pound transformer, right? That's right. And did what? Uh, moved it into the air or what? It moved up about one foot, of, or sorry, one inch. Off the ground. Off the ground. 1,500 pounds. All right. Um, do you think there's any possibility that generations um, or even civilizations that predated ours knew something about this in some way? You know, we don't know how the pyramids were built. We don't know how... The Coral Castle down in Florida was built. We don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. Do you think it possible that uh, some of this technology has been known to some people at other times in uh, the world's history? I think it's highly probable. Now, I do believe in other races in space because it's only logical because of the number of stars and planetary systems. What if there's some kind of intervention here? where they had equipments to help at that time period. I've been in the Great Pyramid. I've been in, in Egypt, and I, I'm thinking, how can somebody build something like this by dragging blocks along on wooden platforms to build a mountain, literally a mountain? Well, you can't do it. Nobody can do it today. I know. So uh, the only thing one can imagine is some sort of technology like this mm -hmm. was employed to do what man could not. I think highly... Probable. I was fascinated by what I've seen there, and also some of the diagrams on the wall indicate um, electrical equipment. That's that's was my exact take on some of them. Uh, east of the Rockies, you're on the air with John Hutchinson. Hello. Hi, Art. How are you? Okay. Uh, John, I have two uh, rather simple questions for you. Okay. Um, you sort of started to segue to it uh, when you mentioned something about uh, taking your, your project into the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. uh, just focusing simply on levitation, have you ever been approached by a magician? Um, no, not by a magi magician, no. 
Okay. And my second question is, uh, when performing the tests, um, where were you in proximity to the equipment? I mean, were you were you shielded by any uh, behind a wall or something along uh, those lines? Uh. Yeah, basically in the control room. Okay, they would operate all the equipment on the outside. I would had proper grounding and shielding. You need that here, where you get too many X-rays and other odd types of things that would happen. Okay, so there's there's uh, it's safe to assume that a, a human form uh, anywhere even. You know, near the the equipment would would uh, suffer probably irreparable damage. Correct. I would um, probably think yes. Yeah. That, because um, everybody was cautious, and um, would you know would seal the area off. And if it was media, um, they would be cautious. And if it was control experiments, they were cautious. And uh, okay. Yeah, it was. But nobody ever got hurt, and that's many many people have come through those labs. That in itself is amazing to me, because you really wouldn't uh, have any idea about the size of the field, and one can imagine many things that could have gone wrong, so I agree with that, Doctor. It's amazing you're still walking around, John. Well, that's what the doctor said. <laughs> but I had a friend who was sensitive enough to actually feel the fields with his hands. Oh, Where really? Is the... uh, really? Yeah, and what I did was take a diode, put it on a, a voltometer, right, and just put it on to... Um, microamps, and I uh, put it near the field, and of course it starts to fluctuate back and forth. Right. And sure enough, it, it would fluctuate back and forth. We could start to predict the fields with this simple setup. So I followed my friend around with this meter, and sure enough, it registered every time he said he could feel this thing with his hand. He, <laughs> he called it slippery. It's slippery. like a slippery feeling, yeah. Oh, that's really odd. Uh, west of the Rockies, you're on the air with John Hutchinson. Hello. 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 Art. Yes. Richard from Aberdeen, Washington. Yes, sir. Um, suggestion. Uh, on the earlier part of the show. Yes. You had a tape recording. Okay. This it, it, does this relate to the guest I have on now, sir? Well, yeah, I'm going to get to that. Okay. Okay, then go ahead to that now, because that's who we have on. Well, I wanted to tell you that you need to speed the tape up. Okay, uh, I appreciate that, sir. Anything else? Oh, yeah, question for your guest is, did they confiscate your records? No. All the videos, records, metal samples were not confiscated. So you've got all of that? I have every piece, um, because they're actually in another location. Uh, and I hope a safe one. Yes. Uh, <laughs> although I've replicated a lot of the stuff and keep sending out to Dr. Andrew Mikrowski of PACE, Planetary Association for Clean Energy. I've done a lot of replications, but I still get more in than I can replicate. Like, I need a secretary help. <laughs> I understand. I uh, need a secretary. First time caller line, you're on the air with John Hutchinson. Hi. Hi, this is Tom, San Antonio, Texas. Yes, Tom. I was thinking uh, every depiction of uh, any type of spacecraft I've seen or heard about, is, it has been a sealed vacuum, more or less. Right. And what I'm thinking now is maybe a spinning table inside of a vacuum. Hmm. Yeah, uh, that's an interesting question, John. We don't have a lot of time, but have you ever uh, done any of these experiments in anything approaching a vacuum? Not no, not a vacuum. I just heard of the French experiments where they s would spin magnetic fields at the speed of light within an electrostatic field. Uh huh. Which is intriguing to me. Well, uh, I, I mean, what you're doing or did do is way out there. I I wish you luck. I, you know, if anybody in the media wants to contact you, since that's the way you seem to, to want to go right now, mm -hmm. it would be H, the letter H, and then effect H effect at infinite dot net. Yeah. Right? Yeah. H effect at infinite.net. So you would be open to uh, media offers and and so forth. Oh, yeah. I'm, I've, I'm, I was slated for Dan Aykroyd's new show there, but it got uh, somebody pulled the whole show off and nobody understands why. Uh, that's right. Nobody and understands why. A friend of mine, David Sarita, who he was a guest on your show, I believe. Uh, he certainly was. He's a real nice guy. We very, very nice guy, yes. And I had Dan Aykroyd on the air as well. 
Very uh, good people. They may be retooling that show.